Hello friends. In this video, we will learn about Airflow Trigger DAG Run Operator. This operator is used to configure DAG dependencies. Let me explain with an example where we will require the Trigger DAG Run Operator. Assume you are writing a ETL program where you have to ETL product master, branch master, channel master, customer master, account master and transaction data. For each of these source data files or data tables, you will write a DAG. So you may write a DAG for product master. Likewise, you will write a DAG for branch master and so forth. Now these DAGs which you write, you might schedule them independent of each other. However, the requirement would be customer DAG cannot execute before the completion of product, branch and channel master. Likewise, account DAG is dependent on customer because an account exists only if there is a customer associated with it. And if you have primary key, foreign key, those kind of relationship defined in your warehouse, then if account master executes before customer master, it may give foreign key error. So these are scenarios where you can clearly see there is a dependency of one DAG on other. A given DAG may not be should not be executed before the completion of a dependent DAG. So here these are basic masters product branch channel. They can run independent of each other. Customer master should execute after product master branch and channel. Likewise account should execute only after customer and transaction at the end. If you have to create this DAG dependency let me show the workflow, ETL workflow. This is the kind of ETL workflow that you want. It starts and then these three DAGs will execute in parallel, followed by customer master DAG, followed by account master and transaction and then end. Now, how do we establish these DAG dependencies? Let's see the Visual Studio code in Python that I have written. What I've done, I have created a master DAG. And this entire workflow has been defined in the master DAG, which you can see here at the bottom. Okay, coming back. Each of these DAGs, product master, branch master, you can write these as separate independent DAGs. For sake of simplicity, all these DAG codes, what I've done, I've put in one PY file where I have declared the product master DAG. Then I've done the branch master DAG. This is not the ideal approach where you put all the DAG codes in one file. The code should be separate, something like this, branch master, product master, okay? Now, let me explain how we create the DAG dependencies. Let's go back to our master DAG. First of all, some of the standard imports Till here, these are all standard imports, which you have learned by now from my previous videos. This is the DAG that we are discussing in the session. So this is the DAG which will help create the dependencies of one DAG on other. Default arguments, some function I am writing here, just a dummy function. Ideally, your logic for auditing purpose, 
auditing means the DAG execution has started at what time it got started this information should be pushed into some audit table or whatever other logic you want to write you can write here this is our standard code to create a DAG this is the name of the DAG which I am giving scheduling it on a daily basis default arguments the first python operator just to say start and when it gets started it will call the function which we declared above all these are standard codes which you have learned so far and as always if you want to type the code pause the video and type the code as you know I typically do not share the code file now comes the important part the trigger DAG run operator in this you can see we have the three DAGs product master DAG branch master DAG and channel master DAG being called these are the task IDs which I have given the task names which DAG has to be triggered product master DAG has to be triggered we have defined the product master all the DAGs this is the code here I have declared the DAG and the ETL part of the code which will get executed in product master DAG has to come here okay then we are invoking branch master DAG for simplicity I've just copy pasted this piece of code and replaced the name product master by branch master okay because here I'm not implementing any business logic I'm just saying sleep for one second when ETL starts sleep for one second and then invoke a function Python callable function where I'm just printing branch master DAG execution completed as of now it's all dummy codes no business logic but I hope you understand the business logic has to be implemented by you and you have to create separate DAG files for each of them something like this okay now these three DAGs let's see the parameter this is the DAG which will get triggered product master DAG this name matches with the name which I have given to the DAG here second important thing execution date I am passing a built-in parameter DS this is a built-in airflow variable to set the execution date in year month day format the timestamp component will not come okay reset DAG run true now why is this parameter required let us assume we have the start and then we have three DAGs getting invoked in parallel product branch channel and these three DAGs are then subsequently calling customer master DAG then it is calling account master DAG and then it is calling transaction DAG and finally this goes and end now assume you have invoked this DAG automated schedule process is called and somewhere here the DAG fails product branch channel they have executed successfully but at customer master DAG the process has failed now you rerun the DAG when you are going to rerun the DAG because this DAG for the given day has already executed it is going to throw an error this DAG is also going to throw an error and this DAG is also going to throw an error as a result the next steps may not execute to avoid that hassle 
we say reset DAG run equal to true because for a given day the DAG already executed because of reset DAG run parameter the DAG will execute again okay next important parameter wait for completion see the work of this task is actually to invoke the DAG product master DAG once the DAG has been invoked by default it is not going to wait whether it is completed or not it will move to the next task immediately however we want the next task to be executed only when this has completed if that is the case you have to set this parameter to true wait for completion which means the next task will execute only when this task has completed poke interval equal to 3 when this task is executed it will call product master DAG now product master DAG may take 5 seconds 10 seconds 1 minute when the DAG completes how will this task come to know so we are saying poke interval equal to 3 after every 3 seconds it will check whether the DAG that was triggered has completed the process so we have set poke interval equal to 3 okay so these are the three tags now because we want them to run in parallel as shown in this diagram start and then we want these three DAGs to execute in parallel in the task workflow what we'll do is we'll say start start is one of our python operator then these are the three trigger drag run operator we'll put it in one square bracket which means they will appear parallel all of this when it gets completed it should invoke the next DAG next task customer master ETL and this task actually invokes a DAG customer master DAG let me just show you the code the code is pretty standard I have written what I have done I've just copy pasted these uh, function repeated number of times okay and I've just said function customer master uh, print statement with DAG customer master DAG uh, just a bash operator to say sleep equal to one and a Python operator saying that there is some ETL process happening here which will call this function where we are just saying okay it's completed as simple as that the objective is to explain the concept of trigger DAG run operator so here trigger DAG run operator will get executed uh, which will call this DAG this is going to once it is going to get completed then the next DAG will get invoked here if you note I have not put poke interval if you don't put poke interval the DAG will after some time will keep checking by itself what is the default time I don't know but definitely it will poke and check whether the DAG execution has completed or not so it is not necessary that you really have to set the time interval however it is a good practice that you set the poke interval yourself for now we are not going to put here the poke interval so that you can understand that even if this parameter is not set the things will work customer DAG is followed by account DAG and transaction DAG all these are copy paste codes and then finally the empty operator this is the entire task flow which is going to now be shown here as yeah your DAG graph as you can see 
let us go ahead and execute this tag trigger tag the tag execution has started the first step start and now the three DAGs are running in parallel. Once these three DAGs gets completed, the customer master DAG execution will get started. You can see two have completed. One is still remaining channel master DAG. The customer master DAG will start only when channel master is completed. Okay, now the customer master DAG should get started. It has got started. Now the execution of account master DAG has commenced. Now the transaction DAG is executing. Finally, the end or empty operator has executed. So I hope you learned the application of trigger DAG run operator and how we set dependencies of DAG. With this, we conclude the session on trigger DAG run operator. I hope you enjoyed and if you really liked the video, I request you to subscribe to the channel in case you have not subscribed. Also do like the video so that it reaches to more other people who are looking for good content on Airflow. Thank you.